for humans and other creatures still alive on planet Earth, things will begin to get intolerable. The only question is when. You know, they say that if you have a frog and it's in water and you just gradually raise the water temperature, the frog won't jump out and it will just cook. Uh, who knows? Maybe the same will happen to us. The sun's temperature gradually increases and we never find any particular moment when we should leave, essentially jump off this planet and then we just cook. It could happen. Just a tiny rise in temperature to a mere 140 degrees would cause all water to evaporate and turn the earth into a desert. We will be cooking then. This is a scary time. What we'd have to be doing by then is looking at some of the outer planets. Those places that we know today are a little too cold to live on, well, maybe they'll become just right. Let's put our sights on those planets and start pitching tent to give us a place to live the day that happens. Clearly, we'll have to find a way to save ourselves or our planet. We may have no choice but to turn to Fred Adams' plan. The most obvious one is simply to build space stations and move into space because we're already building space stations, so by billions of years from now that might become technologically feasible. The other interesting possibility would be to actually try to engineer the solar system and move the planets around. You can in principle do that by steering asteroids or other large bodies into the proper orbits so that they gravitationally scatter off of the planets and move them around in the process. Adams has actually worked out the trajectories necessary to tug the Earth away from the Sun. An asteroid nudged into position would exert enough gravitational force to gradually move our planet to safety. The need for such extraordinary measures may arise sooner than we think. Some speculate that the Earth has in fact already gone through 90% of its habitable lifespan. But there is an even more dangerous phase ahead. Some five billion years in the future, the sun will begin to roil. Its core will shrink as its surface pushes farther and farther outward, swelling to an enormous size, becoming a red giant. That would make for some interesting sunrises. The sun would rise as half the sky. The sun would come up into the middle of the sky and would occupy most of the visible space of the daytime sky. The red giant sun will shine 10,000 times brighter than it does today. What will happen down on Earth? The sun would continue to get larger and larger and larger. It would become so large that it would engulf the entire orbit of Mercury, the entire orbit of Venus, and the entire orbit of Earth. We would be this ember orbiting within the outer surface of the sun. This is not stable because we'll be plowing through solar material, which would eat up our orbital energy and we would spiral down into the center until we ended our life as an evaporated puff of smoke. The sun's red giant phase will decimate our planetary neighborhood. And yet, an even larger event is looming, one that will radically reshape the entire galaxy. Dying suns, boiling planets. Even as the stars that make up our galaxy begin to expire, a still more cataclysmic event is on the horizon. Another galaxy is heading our way. At Apache Point, New Mexico, scientists are finding clues to what will happen. For the past few years, they've helped lead an ambitious long-term effort to map the universe. It's called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, 
and it's tracking the positions of millions of galaxies relative to our own. How gravity has drawn them into great clusters, flung them together, tossed them apart. Every night, the researchers obtain detailed information about thousands of different galaxies. They start with a series of disks. Each hole represents a galaxy in a particular region of the sky. The disks are placed into a metallic drum. Fiber optic cables are connected to each hole, and the entire instrument is inserted into the telescope. From the light of each galaxy, the team derives its position in space. A million galaxies have been charted, and a map of the cosmos is beginning to emerge. Our corner of the universe looks like this. Gravity has created a great spider's web of galaxies like our own. Between them are enormous empty regions, the deepest vacuums of space. But gravity is gradually tightening the web, drawing the galaxies together. The closer we get to home, the more territory has been studied. These maps show that our galaxy is being pulled, slowly and inexorably, toward this nearby grouping of star systems, the Virgo supercluster. But our journey there will not be peaceful, for we are traveling with a small cluster of other galaxies known as the local group, and one of them is heading right for us. We have seen other galaxies collide. We've caught them in mid-act. And it's quite spectacular. Spiral arms are flung out. Stars are cast asunder. And it looks like a train wreck, a cosmic train wreck. If I could live as long as I chose, I would make sure that I lived long enough, five, seven billion years hence, to see the impending collision between the Milky Way galaxy, a titanic collection of 100 billion stars, and the Andromeda galaxy, another titanic collection of 100 billion stars. That'll be spectacular. I want to be around when that happens. And what would that look like? Andromeda is our sister galaxy, our closest neighbor. And it's moving toward us at 300,000 miles per hour. As the collision becomes inevitable, Andromeda will begin to appear prominently on the night sky. If the Earth survives this long, the view will be a stargazer's dream. Ironically, the two galaxies will pass through each other like ghosts, barely touching. But gravity will rip and twist both as they pass. Seen from the Earth, Andromeda will cut the night sky, while the Milky Way itself will warp. Once we see its individual stars, then those stars get brighter and brighter and brighter, and then the entire galaxy fills the sky. And it would compete, it would rival in brightness with our own Milky Way galaxy. There's some future generation that would see two bands of light in its night sky in anticipation of the greatest collision this part of the universe has ever seen. Gravity holds the two disks together, and they begin to orbit one another, locked in a death spiral. Their outer zones will have been ripped from their centers. Our solar system may well meet this fate, sent reeling into the voids of space. If Earth does remain within the galaxy, the carnage would be written on the night sky, for the Milky Way would be torn apart. 
The cores of the galaxies circle each other.